welcome you again in the classes of evs academy in the last class we were discussing about the wildlife protection act of 1972 one amendment done in this particular act in the year 1991 and another amendment a small amendment done in the year of 2006 to procure the tiger reserves under the wildlife protection act of 1972 so two amendments are there and one year are there few definition we have already seen that is the definition of animal definition of hunting what is the taxidermy then what is the definition of wildlife and what is the meaning of vermin that all we have covered and then after that the amendment of the 2006 in the wildlife protection act of 1972 so that's also we have covered that is the to protect and conserve the tiger and other endangered species now today we have to start the forest conservation act of 1980 and one amendment just done after one year of that establishment of act in the year 1981 what is the feature of the forest conservation act so to remove the power of state for the forest conservation so there would be no impact of the government in this forest conservation the conservation is directly now legislative or regulative under which you cannot just break the rules or legislations made for the forest conservation if you look at this forest conservation act 1980 the main is the section 2 which is restriction of the de reservation of the forest and use of forest land for the non forest purposes it means you cannot use the forest land for any other kind of purpose for example agricultural or maybe establishment of any industry or township so that is not allowed the forest are conserved under this forest conservation act strictly uh, under the uh, year of the after the year of the 1980 if you look at the salient feature of this forest conservation act 1980 so here are the few information about the act from which uh, from where we can form any type of question that i have already included here the act restricts the state government and other authorities to take decisions first without permission from the central government so a state government cannot take any kind of decision cannot take any type of authoritative uh, kind of instruction or maybe any kind of decision without the permission of the central government the second feature is saying that the forest conservation act gives complete authority to the central government to carry out the objectives of this particular act so now the state governments have no rights in the destruction of the for, uh, forest the act levies penalties in case of violation of the provision of this forest conservation act of 1980 and that penalty can be in the form of uh, currency in the form of any kind of punishment as well the forest conservation act will have an advisory committee which will help the central government with regard to the forest conservation so this is the salient features of the forest conservation act of 1980 then this was all about the detail of the forest conservation act of 1980 so i hope this is clear to you this is the only important things i can find out in this particular forest conservation act nothing was are do much special on this particular act where i can think that they can form the question so these are all the main things i have already covered in this particular slide and after that we have to discuss the biological diversity act of 2002 so the act was enacted in the year 2002 it aims at the conservation of biological resources managing its sustainable use and enabling fair and equitable sharing benefits arising out of the use and knowledge of the biological resources with the local communities so here this is all about the biological diversity what is the biological diversity that we have already covered in this uh, ecology chapter and here and there we have already discussed that the biological diversity is the variation of the species or variation of the organisms you can find out in a unit area or in any particular area so how to conserve that all the species the biological resources and managing its sustainable use sustainable use means the use of these materials in a such a way that this can be available for the future generations as well so that is the sustainable use so many managing of the sustainable use means you will only harvest that much amount of the species which is not uh, endangering them basically or which is not causing any huge harvest quantity in the environment and enabling the fair and equitable sharing benefits of the 
knowledge which is coming out from that biological resources and sharing that knowledge with the local communities as well so this is the main purpose of this biological diversity act of 2002 the act and we says the three tier structure to regulate the access to biological resources so there are total three bodies under the biological diversity act of 2002 the very first body is the national biodiversity authority nba which is a central government body this is governed by the central government then we have the state biodiversity board which is governed by the all state governments in their particular respective area so that is the state biodiversity board the third the body we have here is the, the biodiversity management committees which is also called as bmcs these works at regional level or local level near to any district a headquarter near to any block area or near to any villages and securing or providing security to the biological diversity present only on that particular area so that is the bio, uh, biodiversity management committees bmcs the short form and full forms are important here and all these three bodies names which are governing under this biological diversity act is important here under this act the central government in consultation with the nba the national biodiversity authority shall notify threatened species and prohibit or regulate their collection so here all the threatened species are notified under the nba then rehabilitation of those species and conservation of those species is also done the act stipulates all offenses under it as cognizable and non bailable so it means that if suppose you are uh, maybe any person not you are maybe any person just caught uh, just violating this biological diversity act so under this circumstances the uh, person would be immediately sent to jail and here it is a kind of non uh, a cognizable or non bailable offense it means that you cannot grant bail for this kind of violation of the rules that is what the non bailable and what is the meaning of cognizable cognizable means that the police person or maybe authority can arrest you without the warrant as well so those offenses which are under the cognizable category on those category the police are uh, don't require any kind of warrant arrest warrant they can directly arrest the person and there would be no grant of the bail as well if anyone found to be violation doing violation of these biodiversity act of 2002 so this one point also you can remember then a statutory body was uh, also established under this particular act which is called as the national biodiversity authority this was established in the year of 2003 the same authority which is which we were discussing in the previous slide so this is under the national biodiversity act so this authority is a central government body which is regulating and governing the biological diversity act so it is a statutory body that performs facilitative regulatory and advisory functions for the government of india on the issue of conservation and sustainable use of the biological resources which is the ultimate aim of biological diversity act as well the nba has its headquarter in chennai tamil nadu india so this one you can also remember this can be asked in the examination the main function of this particular body national biodiversity authority body is advising the central government regulating activities and issuing the guidelines for access to biological resources and for fair and equitable benefit sharing in accordance with the biological diversity act of 2002 so it is mainly regulating this particular act and all the things laws regulations and listed in this biological diversity act is the responsibility that a uh, proper establishing of these particular rules regulation is done by the national biodiversity authority then advising the state governments in the selection of areas of biodiversity importance to be notified as heritage sites and suggest measures for their particular management so any area which is uh, helping to just conserve the biodiversity so all those areas are notified by the national biodiversity authority and they will inform or advise the state government to protect those particular areas and define those areas as a heritage of the state heritage of the state so that is also done by the national biodiversity authority
so i hope these points and functions of the national biodiversity authority are clear to you so that was all about the biodiversity act and biodiversity authority of india now coming to the next law or regulation that is the environmental protection act of 1986 so environmental protection act 1986 this was in the india indian parliament this was the wake of the bhopal gas tragedy that i have already told you so bhopal gas tragedy is the precursor you can say of the environmental protection act bhopal gas tragedy happens in the year of 1984 if i am not wrong and after that immediately the parliament was witnessing a kind of situation where we need some kind of environmental protection law and that was done in the parliament when this epa environmental protection act was passed in the parliament in the year of 1986 and government of india enacted this epa act in 1986 under the article 253 this is important when multiple times asked in the examination which article is having the environmental protection act 1986 of the indian constitution so that is article 253 and this was passed in the year of march 1986 and came into force in 19 november 1986 so this is i think clear to you all you have to remember these points 